Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Standard and I'm the founder and CEO of Petabridge and today we're going to talk about why you should avoid exactly once messaging in Akka.net and everything else. So in any message driven system, and that can include things that use the ACT model, message buses or message brokers, that sort of thing, you're going to have one of three types of messaging guarantees present every time you send a message. And we'll go ahead and order these in order of weakest guarantee to strongest. So the weakest guarantee is at most once. This means a message will be delivered at most one time, but that can also mean the message is never delivered. The next strongest guarantee is at least once. This means that the message will definitely make it to the recipient eventually, but there's also a possibility of duplicates. And then there's exactly once messaging, which means there are no duplicates and the message is still guaranteed to be delivered. We're gonna talk about why exactly once messaging is something you should try to avoid if you can. So to truly guarantee delivery of a message, there's five questions that have to be satisfied. First is we have to verify the message was successfully sent onto the network. Then we have to verify that the message made it from the network to the other host. Then we have to verify the message was received by the actor, or if you're using a message bus, it could be whatever your receiver is. Then we have to verify that the message was able to begin being processed then that the message was finished being processed. And the only way realistically to guarantee all five of these steps being satisfied is to use a form of an acknowledgement protocol. So this looks like is a message might arrive. We go ahead and assign a correlation ID to that message, send that message over the network and oops, looks like the message never reached its intended destination. And so then what will happen is we'll go ahead and notice that message didn't get acknowledged within an appropriate window of time. So we'll re-deliver the message back to the recipient. And we'll keep doing this until we get an acknowledgement back. And what the successful case for this acknowledgement protocol looks like is the same steps happen, but this time a confirmation message is sent from the recipient actor back to the original sender. And at this point, we can go ahead and consider that message to be delivered. So the delivery of the message is guaranteed at that point because we receive that confirmation message only when the target actor on the other end of the network has finished processing the message we were sending. So acknowledgement protocols really serve as the foundation for implementing things like exactly once and at least once message delivery. Let's take a look at the cost that goes into implementing those. So an at most once, which is the weakest form of guarantee, there is no state required on the sender or the receiver because there's no acknowledgement protocol, but the consequence is messages might be lost in transit. In at least once message delivery, the sender needs to keep some state, which basically tells the sender which messages haven't been acknowledged yet and who are we sending them to and when do we need to re-deliver the message by. And some of the consequences of this guarantee is that messages might be duplicated and messages might potentially be processed out of order by the receiver. If you want to implement a strong message ordering guarantee on top of something like at least once delivery, your state's going to get much more complicated on the sender. And then in exactly once messaging, we need to keep state on both the sender and the receiver. The sender keeps pretty much the same state that it had before in at least once message delivery, but the receiver now also needs to keep track of which messages it's already seen and processed before for at least some period of time. That way it doesn't accidentally process the same message twice. And this is expensive and subject to the same message ordering problems that at least once message delivery might also have. So we're going to focus next on the state required to implement exactly once message delivery. But for the time being, let's review why we even need it in the first place. And the reason is because of duplicates. So in this scenario, a message arrives and we go ahead and assign an ID, deliver it to our receiver and our receiver processes it. But the acknowledgement message the receiver sends back to us over the network either arrives late or not at all. And in which case our redelivery timeout fires and we re-deliver the same original message back to the receiver to be processed again. Now, depending on how your receiver is designed and what it does, this could have some negative consequences. For instance, you could end up debiting the same account twice or trying to fulfill the same order multiple times, which would both be bad. So we need to implement a type of state that we're gonna to use to filter out these duplicates and prevent our actor from processing them twice. And I'll show you a brief demo of that now. 
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the at least once delivery sample from our previous blog post. And we're gonna go ahead and create some duplicates real quick. And then we're gonna use a data structure on the receiving side of this at least once delivery actor to implement what's called an acknowledgement buffer. And we're gonna use that to effectively create an exactly once delivery system. So first let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and start up my little application, my console apps over here. So let me bring it forward. So let's see, we have message 33. I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge that. Message 32, acknowledge that. 28, acknowledge that. And 29. So I'm gonna go ahead and camp out on 29 for a little bit, acknowledge it right away. And we should see a duplicate come in even after I send an acknowledgement, which I'll go ahead and do right now. So there's 29, see a couple of other messages. And there we go. We see another copy of 29 is showing up again. And the reason for that was it took us longer than the retry interval to deliver our acknowledgement. And so the at least once delivery actor sent us another copy of the message, not knowing if that confirmation was ever coming or not. So let's see if we can filter this out using a acknowledgement buffer. So this is what our original recipient actor looks like. As you can see, it just has a little bit of code where it handles this reliable delivery envelope, which includes the message ID used to uh, correlate with the uh, at least once delivery actor. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is modify this actor to use an acknowledgement buffer to store the list of all the message IDs it's processed before. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a little acknowledgement buffer using a dictionary. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare that up above there. So this little act buffer uses a dictionary where the key is an actor reference and it maintains a hash set of message IDs, which are all long integers. Then we're going to go ahead and record the ACK every single time we send one. So that way we can always maintain a list of the messages we've seen in the past. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add another receive statement that will get processed before this one does. Remember, you wanna put your most specific receive matches first. This receive statement uses this bit of code here to see if we have any messages from the sender in the past. And if we do, does our act buffer already contain the message ID we're receiving? If so, we'll go ahead and tell the sender uh, that we're gonna send the act back again. Let's go ahead and see how well this runs. All right, so let me go ahead and launch our code sample here. I'll go ahead and pull this back over. All right, so we see message ID is waiting here. And I'm gonna go ahead and camp out for a minute and let some duplicates pile up, plus some other messages like message two and three should start piling up too if I wait long enough. And then I'll finally acknowledge the message. All right, and we see message ID two was waiting for us and I'll go ahead and not acknowledge that. But look at that, two showed up right away. That's because the duplicate was probably already waiting in our mailbox. But if I go and acknowledge it this time, we're okay. Then we see message ID three, four, you name it. So using this really simple acknowledgement buffer data structure, we've been able to get our recipient actor to be able to screen out any potential duplicate messages that might be delivered by the at least once delivery actor. And this effectively gives us a type of exactly once message delivery inside this actor. Now, one of the things that our design we just did did not cover are any of these real world problems you have to deal with once you start using an acknowledgement buffer. And this is why you should try to avoid using them because these problems are hard. For instance, the first problem is how many acts do we store? If I just stored every single acknowledgement and that actor was up and running for months, eventually it might be holding on to a potentially large amount of memory if there are a lot of different senders sending lots of messages to this actor. And it's not that uncommon for some actors to process hundreds of thousands of messages per second. So that can add up really quickly, which raises the next challenge. If we limit the number of acts that we hold on to, what strategy can we use to successfully evict old acts? And coming up with different cache and validation strategies for that is actually kind of challenging. But then we also get into the matter of, well, what happens if the receiving actor crashes? The at least once delivery actor is able to use Akada persistence to go ahead and cache all of its uh, pending deliveries. But what about the receive actor? Don't we need to have some way of caching its acknowledgement buffer in a durable store? And then what happens if the sender crashes? Can we guarantee that it's gonna pick up its uh, message IDs monotonically? In this case with Akada persistence, it does. 
But in every system, you don't necessarily know what the sender guarantees as far as its acknowledgement numbers go. And then lastly, how do we deal with acts and multiple senders? The reason why I designed my act buffer to use a dictionary is you have to discriminate the message ID by sender because you could potentially have lots of different senders all delivering messages to the same receiver that have totally different sequence numbers. And so these are actually very complicated design problems. Although there is one technique we can use to get exactly once delivery without needing to worry about these computer science challenges. So the alternative to using something like an acknowledgement buffer for doing exactly once delivery is to use what's called an idempotent design. And idempotent designs eliminate the need for you to maintain an acknowledgement buffer period because your system is essentially ignorant of duplicates. And here's what we mean by idempotent. So in a regular data structure, let's say we already have this record sitting in our data set and an insert operation comes along that wants to add another copy of the exact same record. Typically, what we would end up with is another duplicate. And this is what typical sort of regular data structures look like. An idempotent data structure under this exact same scenario, the second time an insert comes along for the exact same data structure, we end up modifying the original copy and don't insert another one. So in a SQL parlance, this would be called an upsert. And so idempotent designs essentially make it so if you perform the same operation twice against a piece of data, it's the exact same as if it had happened once. So this eliminates the need for us to maintain any sort of delivery state on the sender side in an exactly once message delivery scenario. So to conclude, we should try to avoid using acknowledgement buffers where we can for a couple of reasons. In one case, local messages that are sent within one process, at most once delivery is fine. Using at most once delivery, it has the exact same sort of fault conditions that calling a function does inside local memory. If, you know, the only reasons why a message wouldn't be delivered under that scenario would be if the process ran out of memory or if it crashed, which has the exact same problems that function invocation would. So you don't need to use exactly once uh, anywhere locally. And when you're going over the network, we should prefer idempotent structures and at least once delivery, since it cuts out about 50% of the state that we need to manage and persist. But if you can't use an idempotent structure, and admittedly, there are lots of cases where you can't, then that's where you should use something like an acknowledgement buffer. So if you're interested in learning more about at least once delivery, uh, here's a couple of resources for you. And thanks for listening. We really appreciate it.